Ooh. Well, loser joins us now. So let's go. Let's go back to that night in question. This was a school reunion that sparked all of this off. What happened? So, yeah, it's a school reunion. There was alcohol involved. And Ruby goes home with two guys and wakes up to one guy with her that, and she didn't kind consent of say yes to it, yeah. consent for it. Um, so the whole, what's played out over the past six months has just been her version of the story against mm. theirs. Um, them saying that, you know, this she did consent this and her saying that she mm. didn't. And I guess what EastEnders have done is just show this happens so often from male and female perspective. Well, there was one episode which was entirely that, wasn't there? Looking at it from their perspective and looking at it from your perspective. Yeah, which I think is important because a lot of time when these stories are played out on soaps, it's just from the female point of view. And I think that it was, it's fair to do this and show, you know, it's not a grey area. It is very much black and white, but these are the, this is the confusion that kind that's of That's surrounded out. it. Confusion that she even felt herself because initially she put herself to blame. Yeah. She said, well, you know, there was alcohol involved. And it yeah. took Stacey, really, as her best friend, to go, actually, that's not OK, and you should go to the police. Yeah, and I think that's what happens. You know, I've worked with rape crisis a lot on this, and they've said that the majority of the time, women self-blame. That's why they don't come forward. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, your body goes into a state of shock. You've had something traumatic happen to you. You want to push it away. Therefore, you say, that isn't the case. That isn't what happened. It was I was drunk. It was my fault. I was wearing the wrong thing, etc." And just to kind of act as if it, it didn't happen. And, it, and nine times out of ten, it does take someone else to say, no, this is what happened to you. And what we just saw in the clip just then was there was an instant a little bit later on where she's kind of taken things into her own hands, really. And I think it just sort of goes to show the desperation that she was in. And um, she, this is Ross, and she's, she's drugged him. Yeah. And she's got him, she's threatening him, and she's now worried that her actions at that moment are going to affect the rest of the case. Yeah, which, which you would do. And obviously, this is only one person's story. This is only Ruby's story. So we're not saying this is how women react. But I think from her background of being a gangster's daughter, etc., all she knew is kind of violence. Mm. Um, and well, she's always where, been a vulnerable character. Yeah, and that's where this comes from. But I think, yeah, it's exactly that. It's, des it's desperation. You yeah. know, women react in many different ways. and. What should be happening is, I guess, you should be coming forward. Yeah. And you have worked, and as is always great with all of uh, of our soaps, and you tackle a storyline of this magnitude, um, you go to people who know best, and you've been talking to Rape Crisis about this. Yeah, so from the beginning, they kind of oversaw every single script, and I've had lots of phone conversations with them, and, you know, I've been on, they've been on hand for any question that I have, because it's really important, especially for a young woman who hasn't experienced that, to portray a storyline, you know, as kind of important as this you have to you have to know what you're doing so, so this week is the court case um, you can see uh, Ruby there sort of obviously she's about to go to court and you can see the impact that's having on her you said as an actress actually just being in that environment that you found it quite a quite an intimidating environment yeah actually. it was quite overwhelming you know on the day I was in a room full of people it, it did even I was kind of you know yeah I was overwhelmed yeah. filming that day which is did you know having been away and then when, when you decided to go back, you were asked to go back, did you know what the storyline was going to be? Yeah, so my first phone call was from John York, who was exec producer at the time, to say, we're bringing you back for this storyline. So I knew from the off exactly you know, what I was coming back to do. I didn't know how long it would go on for, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but yeah. How does it feel to be back? Yeah, amazing. Is it good? Yeah, back in the makeup home. room, like yeah. nothing ever like happened. Nothing, like I was away for twelve years, and I had experienced some amazing things, and you know, worked loads. But you go back, and you just feel like you never left. It's really strange. Does, does it feel like you've never yeah, been away? Yeah, really do. Within two days, I felt like I'd never left. I was like, what have I been doing for twelve years? <laughs> I'm back with Lacey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is so nice, and especially you know at this time in our life. We just feel like we never, we never parted. Well, it's, well, it's nice to have you back. Thank you. And thank you thank very you. much indeed. Thank Lovely you, to you. see you. We'll be watching. It's tonight at 8 on BBC One.